Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. A big thanks to Will aka Banana for this review of Super Street Racer on the Nintendo Switch and a thanks to the developers for the review copy. Way back in 2001, Criterion Games single-handedly brought the racing community back together with its release of Burnout for the Nintendo GameCube as well as the PS2 and the OG Xbox. Very few games have been able to capture that sense of speed and carnage while maintaining a high level of fun and replayability. Many certainly have tried, like Last Gen's Sleeper Split Second, but none have been able to wrap it all up into one cohesive package, quite like that game did. Flash forward to today, just under 20 years later, ouch, I feel old, and Super Street Racer has arrived on the Nintendo Switch with the promise of a return to chaotic fun. But does this one have the petrol needed or is it gonna splutter across the finish line. Let's find out. SSR is exactly what the title suggests. You're tasked with becoming the greatest street racer the world has ever seen. How will you accomplish that feat? By power sliding your way around the 60 plus races in all different parts of the world of course. In terms of story, you're not going to find one, but that certainly doesn't detract from the main attraction here and that's the racing itself. Ripped straight out of the classic races before it, SSR explodes off the starting line with a satisfying burst of nitros. The racing is king here, everything from your standard circuit races and time trials to the generously borrowed eliminator race and destruction runs. The real attention here though is found in the rust bucket you buy to begin your career. Rust bucket might be uh, a bit generous, as you're tasked with taking a generic branded salvage car and tuning it to your heart's content or as far as your wallet can take it. The car tuning is all handled through the garage where all the standard car upgrades can be fitted. Need a new coat of paint? No problem. Select from a wide variety of colors and finishes to show your personality. Taking it a step further, you can isolate and paint individual components, giving the player an added level of control over the ride of their dreams. What really stood out in the garage, however, was the amount of options for tuning the vehicle itself. Gearheads should be entertained by the sheer amount of tweaking that can be undertaken, from the wheels to the aerodynamics. Adding to the levels of immersion is the ability to enter an exploded view of the car's interior. Here, you literally see the car explode apart, with all the components you have access to customize laid out bare before you. Being able to see the new parts you're adding to your car was a delight. Generations of racing games have conditioned us into reading the statistical bonuses added by upgrading X part into Y section of the car and having this worked really nicely. Helping this out is the fact that SSR has partnered with the Motor Trend Group, bringing a level of authenticity to each vehicle as you decide on which speakers, yes, you heard that right, to put in your custom build trunk or boot, depending on which side of the pond you may reside, as well as many other additions. While this inclusion is fantastic, with over 500 branded aftermarket parts, it does clash with unlicensed vehicles making your creation feel a bit off, as the made up vehicles do mimic their real world counterparts with slightly tweaked adornments. The AI drivers make sure that every race is its own adventure, with no two ever really feeling anything alike, as the AI not only battles to thwart your progress, but they also battle each other as if they've been tuning their vehicles as well. Races consistently felt competitive without that cheap feeling you can sometimes get. Yes, the rubber banding mechanic is in effect here, but at no point did this come across as cheating the way some of our veteran viewers can attest to from their collective racing past. Now, unfortunately, multiplayer seems to have taken the proverbial back seat. Limited to couch play only, SSR is screaming for some type of online racing. There is an inherent need among people to want to share and show off their creations, and unfortunately, Unless you have a good group of friends around that can pop over at any time, you're not going to find that here. Controls here are solid. Starting out, your underpowered car is loose on the track as expected, but can easily be tweaked in the garage after a few races help build up your wallet. Overall, the car feels responsive, if not perhaps a smidgen over-responsive at times. Drifting is your salvation. Everyone familiar with Mario Kart drift mechanic should feel right at home, hugging corners as you power slide your way to victory. A nice touch here is that 
overdrifting can actually result in your car completely spinning out. This makes taking every corner in its own mini game as you try to find the right balance between the brake and acceleration. Now all that glimmers isn't gold however as the physics and collision detection just aren't quite up to snuff. Collisions with other drivers feel appropriate most of the time but there are moments where the AI may bump you near your front quarter panel but the back end will spin out as if you were on the receiving end of an aggressive police officer performing a pit manoeuvre. This inconsistency extends to the environments as well. Giant rocks have no presence as you drive through them without even a shake of your car suspension. Likewise, trees are hit and miss a fair, literally hit a tree, power pole, or even gas pump, and you'll have a different result every time. Trying to recreate incidents produces different reactions, again, almost every time. Sometimes a power pole will stop you dead in your tracks, while at others, you'll just blast through it like it was a wet piece of paper towel. Despite these minor quirks, the overall core experience is decent. Gameplay scores 16 out of 20, and the controls are good enough, they score 16 out of 20 as well. Visually, SSR is, uh, uh, the environments range from the deserts of Nevada to the neon-soaked highways of Tokyo, and they're lovingly, uh, partially recreated here. The car itself suffers from some really muddy looking textures, especially in motion. Even making adjustments to the motion blur couldn't help shake the feeling that I was playing a PS2 game at times. When in handheld mode, which being a hybrid console, you will see a downgrade when you play on the go. Docked, the game does look a bit sharper and even lengthens the draw distance, reducing the amount of popping you'll see, as opposed to handheld, where the environment seem to be created ahead of you at times. Overall, it just seems really flat, which is a shame, as the car destruction is a marvel to look at, but ultimately feels as empty as the cabin of the driverless cars. Yep. The future must be now with these fully autonomous vehicles. Everything presented as a distinct early last gen look. Those flat textures lack any real particle effects and they really detract from the on screen action. The degradation of the car is fun if only for a little while. The damage accrued has no tangible effect on the vehicle and serves as only window dressing for those sizzle reels. The car generally falls apart the same way and sometimes even degrades on the wrong side, with your left side showing the damage that you took on your right. The frame rate stays solid, and I can safely report I didn't encounter much, if any, slowdown. And while a true sense of speed perhaps is missing, running at a locked 30 frames per second, the backdrops do a good job of effectively trying to mimic the type of scrolling needed to trick you into believing you might have what it takes to be a professional driver. Now, while I came off as sounding a bit negative on the visual side of things, I'm happy to report that the audio is is a pure delight. The engine sounds may not give you goosebumps, but they do a fairly decent job. Likewise, all of the accompanying acoustics do as you would expect. Collision sounds great as you trade paint with your competitors. The tires squeal as you burn off the tread sliding through the corners. And the soundtrack, while not exactly my cup of tea for racing games, I need my adrenaline pumping rock, certainly fits the bill. The heavily electronica influenced soundtrack is perfectly suited for the title with one particular song standing out as one you may or may not have heard in another video of ours or two. <clears throat> Visuals score a less impressive 10 out of 20 while the audio scores 17 out of 20. Arriving on the eShop with an asking price of £40.99 or $49.99, the true value of this one is going to be in the player's hands. Do you want an arcade racer with an emphasis on tuning for hardened Forza or Gran Turismo Vets? Well, probably not, but fans of the Burnout series and the aforementioned Split Second or even Blur will find some decent value here. There is a good amount of content to be consumed between the racing itself and the hours upon hours that can be lost in the garage trying to draw the attention of one Vin Diesel for a possible cameo in the next Fast and Furious movies. Physical copies can be had for a much cheaper price and would make an excellent stock in stuffer this holiday season. Value scores 15 out of 20.
So in summary, Super Street Racer tells you everything in its title. This is a supersized reimagining of the original after listening to the fan community. While it will not win any awards for its visuals, it deserves some appreciation for its willingness to dive headfirst into full customization. There are some solid arcade racing action elements to be had here as long as you are not one of those that need the graphics to be the star of the show. It scores an overall switch up score of 74%. A big thanks to Will for writing this review and remember to leave a comment down below and let him know what you thought. As always a thanks to our patrons who support the channel each and every month. All the links to that will be down below if you fancy joining us. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!